going back to what you mentioned before, which was uh, the fact that everybody knew behind the scenes, but nobody was talking about out front, which was the declining mental health of Biden. Yeah. Just how widespread was that internally, do you think? I mean, it was impossible to ignore. But if you compartmentalize him, keep him away, we don't let him out front, that's a cheap fake edit, that's a whatever. I think think that's the challenge, though, is they even as they did all of that, um, it, it wasn't enough to try to hide his his you know both physical and mental decline. Um, you know, I I was with him on the debate stage in in 2020 when I was running for president, and I've known Joe Biden for a very long time. I was friends with his son, who also served in the Army National Guard, and um, you know. People say, have asked me, like, did you see signs of this back in 2020? No. I mean, it was the same Joe Biden that that I'd known for for many, many years. And I think recently someone did a, a side-by-side of, of his performance on the debate stage in 2020 versus now mm-hmm. and how uh, significant that difference is. So I, you know, even hearing Kamala Harris and the people around him and, you know, Morning Joe on MSNBC say, oh, yeah. You know, he's never been sharper and he's in the best form he's ever been in his life. Like anybody who knows him now and certainly has known him over the years uh, knew that that was all it was all crap. We've all seen those photos of before term and after term. I mean, even That's Obama, oh, who yeah. entered as this sort of vibrant, mm. handsome black guy, and he comes out and you go, that's two decades in eight years. Congratulations. Full job. Yep, of course it every, is. Every president, every president that served. So obviously, when you're in your late 70s, um, just imagine the toll. The toll Ruthless. So this takes. is something, I, about to make one of the most unpopular cases that the internet's going to hear this year. Every time that I've seen this sort of commentary around uh, Biden's decline, it's made me feel sad. It's yes. made me feel uncomfortable as I watch... This, and for two reasons. First one is the one that everybody kind of agrees with, which is it's an older man who's sort of being forced by this organization to be the tip of the spear when he's evidently not capable of doing it and blah, blah, blah. But the other side is this is the twilight of his career. Yeah. And people remember the thing that you left them with. Mm-hmm. Their lasting impression is often the one that kind of continues through. And, you know, you've got – you can make whatever criticisms you want about what he's actually done or said throughout his career. I don't really know that much. But I know – the way that people socially interpret signals yeah. from others. And to think that you've got this guy, how long has he been? Like five decades yeah. or something he's been in forever. I think he was the youngest U.S. senator ever elected when he got elected to the U.S. Senate. Right. And now he's the oldest president ever. Yeah. So this guy's like the parentheses of U.S. government. Yes. Right? You know, the alpha and done. the fucking omega. Yeah. And um, to think, you know, doesn't matter what you say, that was a very, very long career culminating in you getting to the pinnacle of this and that being this sort of really awful lingering aftertaste yeah. that everybody gets. And I go, that, that makes me sad. That makes me feel yeah. sad for, for somebody. I don't, I don't think that's unpopular at all. I think it's just, I mean, as as humans who have empathy. Not much of that in political discourse. Sadly not. And that's that's been, um, I think that has been one of the sad things that I've seen is, is you know, all of the different clips and the footage that's out there that gets replayed over and over and over again and and um just the the mocking and the ridicule yeah. uh it, it is it's it is unfortunate that 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 is where today's political discourse has gotten rather than just recognizing exactly what you've said like this is it it is sad to see any person mm. in this state especially uh, on a global on a global stage um, the thing is, I mean, you know, Joe Biden's run for president a few times before he got elected. Uh, it's what it's what he's always wanted. This is the pinnacle of what he has always wanted to be, uh, to achieve that title, to be the president of the United States. And so, you know, ultimately, he's the guy who made the decision to run. I have no doubt in my mind that he firmly, firmly, even against other people, maybe telling him he shouldn't run for re-election, uh, Joe Biden is well known to be a very stubborn man, mm. a very stubborn man. So the fact that he chose to run, he chose to stay, and he chose to run for re-election, uh, 
you know, I'm sure there are people, I know there are people around him who benefited from him staying, but that was, that was his decision. That's why so few people are going to give him any sympathy for what's happened, because you go, you already know that you're in decline. You already yes. know. The, and if this is true, if it is the case that he wants to run it, it's not Jill, you know, marionetting. I'm sure, I'm sure she's got a role to play in it as marionetting well. Marionetting but... <laughs> him behind the scenes or whatever, uh, that he is continuing even now, yeah. uh, you know, and then you actually get yourself into a much more awful conversation, which is, is he cognizant of exactly what he's potentially trying to sign himself up for? Like, are we yeah. talking about, you know, someone who's really, really detached? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what a what an absolute... It, the fact that the Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Jill Biden story makes Trump's reality TV campaign actually just look like one smooth arc between it all. Yeah. You know, stuff behind the scenes and stories and what's going on in Ukraine and there's this deal and there was a backhander and all of these photos and there was a laptop thing. You go, like, this country is... Yeah mental like yeah. this country is crazy and and the worst thing i mean all of this is deeply troubling but when you really look at it who you know who who's forgotten along the way in this whole narrative you know it's it's the everyday working man and woman who's struggling to get by it's you know the fact that we have more and more kids graduating from high school functionally illiterate a failing education system that you 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 know open borders and everything that's happening because of that the, the the real issues that that are actually affecting everyday Americans' lives are too often lost mm. um, or go on the their voices go unheard because of um, all of this other stuff. Traveling should be about the journey, not the chaos of packing, which is why I am a massive fan of nomadic. They make the best luggage that I have ever found. Their backpack and their carry-on pro have genuinely made the travel process five times easier. They've got compartments for everything, your laptop, your shoes, your sunglasses. It is so well organized that even your toothbrush will feel important. It's like the Marie Kondo of luggage. Everything has its place. Best of all, their products will literally last you a lifetime with their lifetime guarantee. I'm in love with this thing. I, I use it every single day. If you've seen me scooting around Austin, this is what will be on my back. And they've got a lifetime guarantee. So this is the final backpack that you will ever need to buy. And you can exchange or return any product within 30 days for any reason. You can get a 20% discount off everything site-wide by going to the link in the show notes below or heading to nomadic.com slash modern wisdom. That's nomadic.com slash modern wisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Tulsi, you will love the full-length two-hour-long podcast, which is available right here. Go on. Press it.